Hello everyone, welcome to the most must-see movie review channel in the galaxy. Welcome to Not Movie Hacks. Uh, speaking right now is what is usually one half of your hosting team, Matt, but today it is going to be about like nine-tenths of the hosting team. Nine-tenths, yeah, that's a good Unless you, uh, unless my uh, fellow co-host Tyler decides to chime in during the review, which you will. Make snide comments. Yes. Attempt to make snide comments. Uh, <laughs> so normally we do movie review channels, movie reviews on this channel, but... Like the No Mercy review, which no one watched, I will be doing a review for Raw's most recent pay per view, TLC. So let's get into it. The kickoff show featured um, Emma, who had just won a five per- five woman gauntlet match on Raw to face Asuka, who is coming off of probably the most successful NXT run out of any superstar to go through NXT. She was undefeated. For, and she held the women's the NXT Women's Championship for over 500 days, I think. Wow, that's actually... And a- actually didn't even lose the belt. She had to give it up. Really? Yeah, so she's going into WWE oh, good for her. undefeated, and that's great. Oh, hot damn. Do you think, though, do you think WWE will continue with that? Or they're going to just go, nah! Well, they haven't really handled any other NXT so, <laughs> superstars very well. So I, I have hope because uh, cause WWE loves their streaks. Really? Yeah, they love streaks. So they're just gonna continue. Or records from like longest reigning, most most belts, most wins. Okay. So hopefully they'll keep this going because Asuka's actually a really great wrestler and very entertaining. Um, so Emma had the advantage for most of this match, and she actually had a lot of stiff kicks. She uh, had Asuka held up in the one of the corners by her feet and was kicking her in the chest pretty stiffly. There's some mi- minorly botched ankle lock where. Uh, Asuka had Emma in an ankle lock, and Asuka's supposed to flip herself over so the momentum would send Asuka out of the ring, but she didn't flip very believably, so then it just kind of looked like Asuka decided to jump out of the ring for no reason. Uh, but it was okay, because the match is overall pretty good. And then it ended with um, Asuka hitting a pretty uh, pretty devastating super kick on Emma, and then getting into the chicken wing, which she calls the Asuka lock, and then she tapped. It just sounds ridiculous, the chicken wing. There's a wrestler, uh, Marty School, Marty Skrull, he's mm-hmm. called the villain. He um he's in the Bullet Club, and he originally, cause he's supposed to be a heel, uh-huh. but he so he did the chicken wing, cause that's a as a finish, cause it's a really like kind of boring submission move. Yeah. But like he got the move like so over with the audience that like he does this thing now where he kicks, and he does a he does a spin, he goes like this, and he yells chicken wing, and everyone yells chicken wing too. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's so, so great. Dumb. It's so great. Um. So next we had a uh, remember Elias, the guitar guy. Yeah. He had a segment, and he started to play a song. And then Jason Jordan came out and started throwing vegetables at him, and then that was it. Um, next, we had the well, that that'll be coming up later again because they'll have a match about it. Um, next, we had the cruiserweight match with Brian Kendrick and Jack Kelleher versus Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander. And this felt more like a cruiserweight match than what they normally would have on Raw or on Two Five Live. It was fast paced with quick tags. Um, a lot of swaying with the advantage. It's not the traditional, oh, we're going to get the good guy in the corner and the bad guys are going to beat him up until he gets a hot tag when everyone stops and claps and everyone gets into it and then the hot tag is done and then there's a run and then you know what happens. I felt like this match had like some sort of... The, the, ma- the wrestlers had some sort of chemistry that was um, that we need to see in 205 Live and with the Christmas division as a whole because these people are the best wrestlers in the WWE and they're not given... They're not allowed to do the things that they can that they normally do, like on the indies. Um, so next we had Cedric does a flip over the top rope and uh, lands on Alexander and Kendrick, but he lands on his feet too. So that was pretty cool because Cedric Alexander's the man. Um, as the match goes on, Brian Kendrick uh, and Red, and uh, Jack Alher were uh, working Rich Swan. Rich Swan eventually gets hot tag to Alexander, as Cedric Alexander, and um, he does his cool handspring roundhouse kick. Onto Galher, and I can hear that. What? In your phone. It's gonna distract anyone. There's no noise on my phone. <laughs> you sure? That's me breathing. I'm sick. Oh, uh, stop breathing. <laughs> <laughs> and it ends I'm with. I'm not cutting that. Uh, I'm gonna keep that in that awkward little. I can hear T- you. Tyler couldn't cut it if he wanted to. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, I could. Alright. Uh. <laughs> So then it ends with Cedric Alexander hitting a lumbar check on Brian Kendrick, gets the win, and obviously they're, they're booking Cedric Alexander pretty strong, because his finisher, the lumbar check, just absolutely demolishes anyone that is unfortunate enough to hit it. Next we had Alexa Bliss versus Mickey James for the women's title, and the story of the match was that Mickey James is old, even though she's only like 37, 
and really Cedric Alexander. The story is that she's old and she's only thirty seven. Yeah, yeah and John Cena's forty and there's no. Old yeah, but she's a woman. Different standards. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Women get old at nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a little generous. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little bit. Yeah. Oh god, we should probably cut that part out when we're, we're not, not going, going to. to uh, so, and then Alexa Bliss is young, and she's a women's champion. And also, if uh, Mickey James won this match, she would tie Trish Stratus for the most women's championship wins at seven. Um, so the story was that Mickey James called Alexa Bliss a biscuit butt, and they're trying to get that chant over, and then Mickey James slapped Alexa Bliss's butt at one point. <laughs> that, and, and that, like was that? The high, that was the high point of the match. That was the high point where you just went, oh, this is, you're like, I like this. <laughs> it wasn't bad. So, like, a lot of it, Alexa Bliss is a decent wrestler when she's with someone like Mickey James who just knows what she's doing. Um, a lot of it was with Alexa Bliss, you know, working Mickey James's arm, left arm, and then Mickey James rallies back. Um, Alexa Bliss has a pretty decent um, sunset bomb onto Alexa Bliss. She goes for her uh, Twisted Bliss up top rope, misses. Then the match should have kind of climaxed there, but instead um, it kind of kept going and the crowd got pretty bored and started chanting, we want tables, which you would expect to see in a TLC match, but guess how many TLC matches or matches involving tables, ladders, or chairs individually or in this pay-per-view? Zero. One. One. Wow. Good job. <laughs> yes. Um, so, of course, they didn't get tables because it's not the kind of match, and eventually Lex Bliss wins the DDT. It's Mickey James. And then Mickey James has a promo at the end. She says that like she's gonna have to, she's gonna hold the belt one more time before before she retires, even though she's only thirty seven. So she'll be around for a while, I would still imagine. Next we had probably the dullest point of the of the show, which was Enzo Amore versus the cruiserweight champion Kalisto. And wait, Enzo already lost it. Yeah, so th- he lost it kind of because. He was originally... I talked about Neville walking yep, out. Yep, Neville. Well, so he was originally supposed to beat Neville again for the title. Because, like, you know, the, the person who last has the title, like, gets his rematch clause. Yep. They get their designated re- rematch clause. So his rematch clause is going to be on Raw one night. And they told him, uh, Neville, you're going to lose to Enzo again. He walked out. They think he's gone for good. So instead they had Callisto fight Enzo. And he won the belt. Um, and Callisto is a good wrestler, but he's a charisma vacuum. It's Amore has charisma on the mic, but he's not a very good wrestler. So it's just a tale so, of two shits. Yeah, so it's... and Whereas Neville was great at both. He, he had, like, this Game of Thrones thing where he, he was the king of the cruiserweights. Awesome. He was amazing. It was so great. And now, I don't know where he's... He might join Bullet Club. That's what it looks like he's going to do. That'd be great. Um, so, starts off with Enzo. Enzo lost his voice when he's doing his promo at the beginning. Um, claims he was partying last night. Either that's really irresponsible, or he's probably just sick, and you want to make himself sound cool. Either way, I don't know what to think about that. He just, I mean, he has such a little redeemable aspect of him as it is that when he doesn't have his voice, it's kind of like, why are you even here? Um, and then this match was relatively boring. A lot of Enzo Amore's moves consist of him winding up and then punching and kicking the opponent in the face, because that's all he can do. When he's not selling the other person's offense... Um, eventually, uh, Callisto's trying to pull Enzo back in the ring at one point. Enzo grabs the ring apron while the ref's putting the ring apron back. Enzo thumbs Callisto in the eye, hits him with his, uh, kick finisher thing, and he regains the championship, so Enzo Moray is the first ever two-time cruiserweight champion. That's awful. It's, uh, it's definitely something. (laughs) Jesus. And to make this matter even worse... The match that followed was probably the best, the best, the best, best thing not NXT WWE has put on this year. It was AJ Styles versus Finn Balor, and the story of this match was that there was no story because Finn Balor was originally supposed to face Bray Wyatt in a Demon versus Sister Abigail match um, that no one was looking forward to. So instead, we got a really great match between two technical wrestlers. Um, AJ Styles was of course in Chile at the time because SmackDown is touring South America right now. Um, so the commentator's really building up this whole, he's been flying for 18 hours to get here, he's jet lag, but he's, he's, he's gonna wrestle, um, even though I saw on Reddit that he probably only flew for like three hours or something. Really? So, <laughs> so we'll see about that, and this match is, was more like a fan service thing because obviously they had no beef going in, they're on two separate brands, um, Finn Balor, when he was in New Japan, under Prince Devitt, created the Bullet Club. Um, and then the day he left New Japan to go to NXT, AJ Styles came to New Japan, 
became the new leader, along with Carl Anderson of Bullet Club, so it was pretty cool. I mean, both of them are obviously not Bullet Club leaders anymore, it's Kenny Omega, but it was cool seeing two former uh, Bullet Club leaders in the ring fighting one another. And even before the match started, the crowd was pretty hot. They were chanting, this is awesome. They are chanting, too sweet, because that's what uh, Bullet Club does. Not anymore, though, because they got a cease and desist from WWE. Um, early match was pretty much a stalemate. It was fast-paced, though. A lot of rest- a lot of WWE wrestling has these really slow rest holds that I don't like. Um, but when you get these two guys, like, obviously know what they're doing. They make, the- they make the rest holds fast, and there's a level of, like, this could be believable because of how quickly they're trying to gather moves and the moves have meaning like they're trying to wear each other down it's not just we need to talk about what we're gonna do next so i'm gonna put you down the ground and hold you in a headlock and then we're gonna stomp on the ground really loudly so the audience knows the clap and that's how it goes this was not that it was a very great match um what happens next um he just kicked off the turnbuckle and Finn Balor hits gets pretty cool uh, flip over the top rope hits him doesn't land on the seat though like Cedric Alexander. Um, AJ has a pretty cool reverse into his new signature submission hold the calf crusher um, and then Finn Balor got up it smashes his head into the ring that was pretty cool. Um, eventually oh that's unprofessional oh my mom's calling me Ooh, I'm gonna let that ring. Uh, very very unprofessional Matt. Uh, <laughs> So what happens later is Finn Balor uh, drop kicks AJ Styles um, from the barricade and um, AJ's and then oh he drop kicks AJ Styles into the barricade. Ref's gonna count. Ref's gonna try to count out AJ Styles, but Finn Balor goes, "No, we're not gonna do the count out. I'm gonna win fairly." So he gets back out to bring AJ Styles in, but AJ Styles tackles him over the ring announce table. That was pretty. That was a pretty sweet spot. Um, they eventually get back into the ring though. AJ hits uh, Finn Balor with a pay kick. Um, while Finn is going on the top rope for a coup de gras, and then he gets him in a, he jumps off the top rope into a Hurricane Rana, launches Finn Balor, that was a sweet move. Um, AJ gets ready for a 450, but absolutely misses it, goes face first into the ring. Um, Finn Balor, um, hits him with a pretty vicious drop kick, or at least AJ sold it really well. He went flying back into the turnbuckle, um, into the corners, lying down. Finn Balor goes for the coup de gras, hits him perfectly in the stomach, that probably hurt in real life. Um... And gets the win. And at the end, for the ultimate fan service, Finn Balor and AJ Styles, too sweet. They're friends. They get it. Bullet Club. Four, 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 life. That's how the song goes. Um, I'm looking at him in disbelief right now. And it was funny because every a lot of people are catching on to the Bullet Club because, like, I mean, their their shirts are, are now in Hot Topic. That's how big they've gotten. And, um... It was funny because the ring announcers, like, they're not allowed to, like, address, like, like indie stuff. They are. So, like, Michael Cole is like, they were both the leader of the same faction in Japan. <laughs> and another That's guy, it. Another guy is like, was like, Corey Graves was like, um, they are both, they are both the head of that notorious club. Oh, my <laughs> was like, ah, oh, just, just say, just the say it's the Bullet Club. It's a, so, obviously, the people, only people who care already know what the Bullet Club is, and the people who don't care aren't going to bother to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's, they're, they're, it's going to go in one ear and out the other, so I'll see what the big deal is. So, overall, best match of the card. Um, and next we get the combination of Elias getting vegetables thrown at him by Jason Jordan in a match. And I was doing homework during this match because I really didn't care. Um, <laughs> Jeez. Um, but it was funny. But I was listening because Booker T was like contradicting himself because he's a really bad man. He's a re- really bad ring commentator. Booker T. Yeah, he's Booker awful. T he's, is a, oh, I he's, love Booker T. He's great. I love Booker T, but he's he's not good. Like like commentating. Like he's like, man, this alive is on a real winning streak. And like Cole and Greaves are like, Booker, he lost last <laughs> Monday. He's, he's just kind of, and then he's like, <laughs> he's like the whole match, he's like, it's like, man, I don't know about the last guy. He's like, Booker, you're just, you're just, <laughs> you're just going back in yourself all the time. <laughs> and, then, and then it comes in again later during the last match, just to be funny. Because oh, um, it's like, I feel like he does it to be funny. Like, he basically, all the three of them, like, just try to make each other laugh during, like, really? during shows. It's really funny. It's great. Oh, Booker T. Um, and then basically Jason Jordan wins with the roll-up. And I don't know if this is botched or not because uh, Elias clearly had his his elbow up during the roll up, and the the ref had a bad angle on it. So I don't know if that's storyline or if that is um, or if they'll make it storyline now because it was so obvious. But we'll see. Next we have the main event, 
which has the shield and Kurt Angle versus The Miz, The Bar. Wow, which, you have a page of notes for this Yeah, one. this I is... I feel bad going into my review with absolutely nothing. I'm going to write something. <laughs> oh, God. So, well, and this is this, this match or book the hell, so that's why I have so many notes. So, The Shield and Kurt Angle, well, two-thirds of The Shield and Kurt Angle versus The Miz, The Bar, which consists of Cesaro and Sheamus, and then Braun Strowman and the returning Kane, who um, has put on quite a belly. During his campaign season in uh, South Carolina, I think. But he's running for... He's running office. for some office in oh. South Carolina, I think. Um, he's also like a car salesman. Uh, pretty interesting guy. Um, so, a pretty good opening package for Kurt Angle. Um, sent it around Kurt Angle's comeback. You know, obviously, no one was, was planning for this. They probably wanted for Kurt Angle's first match back in WWE. They probably wanted something bigger booked. But because Roman Reigns was sick... They needed something big, so they went with Kurt Angle, which I guess is interesting. It's kind of weird that he's a general manager of Raw, and yet he's fighting, like he's in a match against other other Raw wrestlers. That's, that's weird. <laughs> so, um, what are you, oh, I got a voicemail. So what are you going to do there? Um, so, Miz, in the promo right before the match, backstage um, segment, uh, Miz is trying to hype everyone up, and I like him as a leader a lot. Um, he's really come a long way as a wrestler, and... Even though he's surrounded by these guys who are a lot taller and probably a lot better of a wrestler than he is. Well, not all of them, actually. Probably only really Cesaro and Kane. Um, but he holds himself well, and he's believable as the leader of this new faction. Um, so Kurt comes out to the Shield music with Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, and he doesn't try to hide the fact that he's absolutely jovial about coming back to WWE, about wrestling again. He has a huge smile on his face, which is great to see. He looked a little nervous, but... Kurt Angle. He can do whatever he wants. Um, so, by this point, The Miz and his squad are already in the ring, and the Shield surround them. They have their they have their uh, bulletproof vests on. They surround them with chairs and just start, again, the ring just start annihilating them. Specifically, Kane, who just takes shots and shots at the ribs. He was the only one left in the ring. He was just taken in by all three of the other guys. Um, cool spot was uh, Seth... Was Seth and Dean set up uh, Kane and Braun Strowman on the announcer tables. They set up two ladders. Dean did an elbow onto Braun and Seth did a uh, frog splash onto Kane. It's a pretty cool spot. Um, what else am I going to talk about? Oh, Angle gets some German suplexes, um, gets Kane in an ankle lock, but Braun Strowman power slams Kurt Angle into a table. Um, which takes out Kurt Angle for the entirety of the match, and you can obviously tell that Braun Strowman was handling Kurt Angle like a baby because they can't hurt Kurt Angle. They're like, oh, God, Kurt Angle, no, you're over... How old is he? 48. He's 48. What a great man. Yeah. He won a gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Jeez, all right. Um, then, so... The numbers game catches up on the shield, and because there's two of them and uh, five of the other guys, and there, there's a pretty good few minutes of them just wailing down on the shield, and eventually Kane accidentally hits Braun Strowman with a with a chair to the back. It was a light hit, but still a hit nonetheless. And right before they're about to they're about to throw down, the shield gets back up, try to get some sort of offense going, but are immediately shut down again. Um, good old Sheamus, as always, man managed to mess up a spot. Um, they tried him and Cesaro got Dean into a double crucifix, gonna throw him through a table, but Dean barely hits a table and the table just kind of falls over, <laughs> doesn't break, and then everyone um, starts booing. They start chanting "You effed up," um, and then <laughs> James just looks, <laughs> just looks at the camera because <laughs> he has no idea what to do next. And that I was uh, <laughs> that was this. <laughs> That was pretty amazing. She was just like, oh. And then to make up for Braun Strowman, power slams of step power slams Dean Ambrose to a table. It was cool. Um, the so Miz and his team eventually lead the shield down to the end of to the entrance way where there's a garbage truck and they're with the throw. Seth and Dean to the garbage truck, but they get some offense out. They jump. They jump off the garbage truck, pretty cool. They lay land on just about everyone except for the Miz. Um, they chase Miz back into the ring, but eventually, you know, the numbers game eventually catch up to them again. Um, Kane chokes, so Kane and Braun finally turn to each other, and Kane choke slams uh, Braun off the stage. And right, and so for the design of the TLC pay per view altogether, like at the, around the end, they had chairs. Um, 
like it had like ropes and they had like like black ropes so you could barely see them and they had chairs so it looked like kind of looked like floating chairs like on ropes like hanging down like multiple chairs so then when after Kane power choke slams Braun um off the stage he pulls one of the ropes and just like ten chairs f- falls right onto Braun and this it was just neat to look at um, I never thought of anything like that before I don't think anything like that's ever been done before um and it also just makes Kane look pretty sadistic and it makes Braun even look better when he gets back up moments later after the spot um. So yeah, Braun gets back. The team turns on Braun Sturman, and then they throw him into the garbage truck, killing him. Because when you get thrown into the trash compactor part of the truck, you get compacted and die. Wait, what happened? So I mean, obviously Braun Sturman's alive, but like they threw him into the trash truck, Jeez. the garbage truck. So you know, like the garbage, like it compresses all yeah. the garbage. So like, it, like it's implied that like he Braun died. got like squished. That's awesome. And then, like people like like crowd is changing. Um, you just murdered him or something. <laughs> like you just murdered something, something like that, and I mean obviously he's still alive, but it's just just funny things like that. Um, so eventually they they the the Miz, the Bar, and Kane bring the two Shimmers back into the ring. They're just beating down on him again. And then you're and then uh, Kane and Kane comes back. He's holding his ribs. He's playing his music. <laughs> Um, Cesaro and Sheamus come out to try to stop him, but they both get hit by angle slams. That's awesome. And, <laughs> it was awesome. And uh, Sheamus gets angle slammed like onto the ring entrance, which like they hurt. And then um, Cesaro gets angle slammed onto a table, which is also pretty cool. Um, angle comes back to the ring. The shield um, blast came through a barricade. Pretty brutal. Um, Miz gets hit, gets hit with an angle slam. Oh, Miz, so while the Shields are taking care of Kane, the Miz thinks up and Kurt Angle hits him with a skull-crushing finale. But Angle kicks out, which I was kind of surprised by. I honestly thought the Miz was going to win there. Um, and then, eventually, Miz is by himself. He's surrounded by Angle, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins. And they all do their finisher onto him. And then, to finally, to put the Miz down, they do the powerbomb spot that usually is with Roman Reigns. But instead, it was with Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle did the ooh thing. And they hit him with the power bomb. One, two, three. The shield wins, and that was TLC, ladies and gentlemen. Overall, it was a very fun show, in my opinion. Um, I hope what I said made sense because I am pretty uh, unprofessional when it comes to these. I'm not. I don't have that much experience with doing uh, wrestling reviews. I watch a lot of wrestling, but when it comes to actually describing what I've seen, I had, took a ton of notes. And if anyone watches this and wants to comment. Give me some advice. I'm totally open to it because yeah, it was lovely. I understand that I'm not the best at this. Because first of all, I'm talking by myself for the most part. Second of all, I don't really do that much do that, that many wrestling content material. Uh, Matt, it was great. <laughs> thank you, Tyler. I wish I could say the same thing about your uh, video, which may or not have already happened. It has not come out yet. <laughs> it is not. We haven't even recorded it yet. So. <laughs> And I'm glad you're uh, continuing with continuity. Yes. Um, that's what I'll have to say. Um, I think like, if you haven't seen the review, you, you know, you've already looked at my spoiler section. I think you should watch the last two matches because they are very, very good. And I'm very excited to see because WWE is usually at its best when it's thinking on its feet. Like when they have long story plans, they're usually drawn out and predictable. But like, like when Finn Balor was injured after he won the Universal Championship and they gave the belt to Kevin Owens. Like, that stuff was awesome because it was unpredictable. So we'll see what goes on here. I don't know how long Roman Reigns or Bray Wyatt will be out and how this affects, you know, Survivor Series, WrestleMania plans. But I'm fascinated to see what comes of this whole Kurt Angle taking the side of the shield, whether anything will come of it. I think it should because it's literally your boss is is siding against you. <laughs> When it from like the Miz of the Bar Braun Kane's perspective, I'm excited to see this Braun and Kane feud that seems to be boiling for later on, probably at Survivor Series. Um, other than that, um, I might I think there's New Japan pay per view coming up, so I might if I get to watch those matches, I might do something on that, but I cannot confirm because I don't have a New Japan account. Still have to watch them through uh, secular sources. Legal. <laughs> but if you like what you've seen here, I implore you to check out. Other content, watch my No Mercy review, even though you already know what happens. Please watch it. I was the only one who watched it. I'm probably going to be the only one who watches this video, too. I accepted that. I like doing these. That's all that matters. So thank you, and thank you, and...
Fuck. <laughs> I totally messed up the <laughs> outro. Thank, thank you. And thank you guys for listening. We will have um, a Only the Brave review, which will be just with me. That no one cares that about. That no one cares about. Then, most likely, we will have Brawl and Cell Block 99. Yes. We will have a That'd review for review. that within this week. Yeah. Uh, and then, anything else? Do you, can you think of any other movies we should review? Um... <laughs> like that. Uh, um, um, Killing of Sacred Deer is coming out. Deer will come True out. Detectives coming out. True Detectives coming out. Uh, most likely for movies that are coming out this weekend, Suburbicon. Yeah, we can see Suburbicon. We can see Suburbicon. Um, and then we might have a TV review out for Mindhunters, maybe. maybe for what? Mind- oh, yeah, because I started watching. Mindhunters is great. You I'll have to Mindhunters. catch up with that eventually. Yes, it's so, a very, very good show. Matt, if you want to end it. Okay, thank you for listening, everyone, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>